delighted to um, be introducing the programme uh, this evening. Um, this special, this Vishesh Karakram, this special programme uh, in honour of Dr. Baba Sevambedkar's Jayanti sitting there chanting the mantra. I felt this uh, surge of prerada, surge of inspiration and sort of excitement. And uh, um, I realised I was having the feelings I had when I lived in India at the time of Dr. Ambedkar's Jayanti. Um, I celebrated so many of those in, in Bombay, in Nagpur, Pune, and there was a tremendous feeling in the atmosphere all over the, the, these cities, all over, all, all over India. There were these celebrations in honour of the birth of Dr. Ambedkar. And... Uh, I'm also especially pleased to be introducing to you Dharmachari Vivekaratna. Um, I first met Vivekaratna, he wasn't Vivekaratna then, in 1986 <laughs> in Bombay, um, but through the great blessing and intervention of my beloved teacher Bhante Ergen Sangarakshita, in 1984 he, he suggested very strongly I should move, I should return to India. Uh, leave where I was at the time and go back to India. Uh, the time had come and I just said yes. And Lokamitra sent me a letter saying, you're in Bombay. <laughs> um, you didn't get to discuss things in those days. You just went where you were told. So I lived in Bombay and thank goodness I did in some ways a very unforgiving city. Uh, but uh, we did a retreat. Uh, there was a wonderful sangha uh, in Bombay. We, we had a wonderful little community and we were very very active with the Dharma and uh, particularly inspired by an older member named Bodhi Sen a wonderful, absolutely wonderful, outstanding Dharma Chari who, who became a very close friend and my main interpreter and he, 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 we did a retreat in, in New Bombay um, at uh, what was the name of the place? Oh, oh, and there was this man who came on the retreat and he said, you have to talk to this man. He's really, really interested. He's really serious. Vivekaratna. And he, Vivekaratna was from Nagpur, but he was working for, for Indian Telecom. He was sent on a course, I think because he wasn't a proper... Um, officer in telecom because he wouldn't take bribes, um, so they kept sending him on courses and things like that. Um, but he used to come every day to see me. Every single day he would come after his course, after his work. He'd come in, he'd always bring me fruit, and then we'd have a very serious Dharma discussion. He obviously had studied Dhamma, searching for Dhamma. Uh, very devoted to Dr. Ambedkar, very devoted to the Buddha. And I was getting question after question about Trilokya Bhadama Sangha, about Dhamma, about Bhanti Sangharakshita, one question after another. And then we'd go and do our evening program. And in those days, we had to travel on public transport all over Bombay, long, far away from where we lived. Come with us. It didn't matter where we'd go, didn't matter if we'd come back very late at night, one o'clock in the morning, he was with us and all the time wanting to know, wanting to know. And in this way, we forged a very, very strong friendship. And he moved back to Nagpur, he got ordained very quickly. And uh, then, to my great uh, good fortune, I used to go and stay with him, his family, in Nagpur. And uh, there was this wonderful community of people that, that Vivekaratna had connected with, uh, young people, very, very inspired. And, well, we, I used to spend weeks and weeks with, with Vivekaratna. And I came to, well, as I say, came to really admire and respect and love Vivekaratna. Um, really, uh, just this single-minded dedication to Dhamma. Uh, and I'm so glad he's going to be staying with us here at Havnaloka for six months. 
I'm so glad he's come at this time so that we can celebrate, celebrate Dr. Ampedka Jayanti with him. And uh, I should just say that for many, many years, Virat Karatna has been is it the director of Nagaloka. Uh, the, uh, this very, very impressive, large uh, centre that we have in, in Nagpur. And he's also doing a lot of um, what we call the outreach work, going out of Maharashtra to other states uh, to communicate the Dhamma. I could go on talking about the Vikram, but I think what, what, before we go any further, we need to do the proper things. So first of all, I'm going to ask Vivekaratna to make an offering of flowers to the photo of Dr. Ambedkar on the shrine. I'm not sure if I'm doing these in the right order. I can't quite remember my Indian courtesies. But we have our two special guests within our, with, with us this evening, our two chief guests, Vivekaratna and Sabuti yeah. Dharmacharis. Yeah. And I'm going to, we, we, I probably should have welcomed them first, but anyway, never mind. I'm going to ask Dharmachari Surita to give some flowers to his Kalyana Mitra, Dharmachari Sabuti. Vivekaratna to speak to us on the significance of Dr. Ambedkar, of Baba Seb Ambedkar. So please listen, listen well, and hear what my dear friend has to say. All dear brothers, Jai Bhim, Nama Uddhai. So it's a pleasure for me to. Uh, Say about Dr. Ambedkar, uh, not very long, definitely. <laughs> uh, we can talk so much, so, but uh, considering the retreat situation and his uh, significance to my life and his uh, work as a bodhisattva spirit. So, therefore I'm thinking this is a very proper situation because the theme of the retreat is bodhisattva ideal. And Dr. Ambedkar, henceforth I will say Baba Sahib. Baba Sahib means Father Lord. <laughs> Baba is, is a uh, Marathi Hindi word known as uh, uh, father is equivalent to father and we are the son. So all scheduled caste community throughout India called him as a very respectfully Baba Sahib. 
So I will also use the same word, Baba Sahib. So first of all, I, I would uh, uh, say that I am Maharashtrian Indian and that has an effect on my pronunciation. <laughs> so please forgive me if I do not pronounce the words in a real English sense very correctly. <laughs> so try to make out. <laughs> uh, so he is, as I said, Bodhisattva and we are thinking uh, and discussing how the Bodhisattva works for the benefit of the people, for benefit of all, all beings. So in the same way, I will not say all beings, sentient beings, but he definitely liberated, emancipated millions and millions of people in India, just like me, not me alone. I am a representative of one of them. We may say that I am a representative of millions of millions Indians who were liberated by him. And uh, we were liberated from the hell of caste. We were liberated from the level of animal living to this pre present as a man living or human living, we can say. So, So his whole struggle was for the reclamation of a dignified life for this whole lot, millions of people in India. We can call them as a downtrodden. In constitutional terms, it is called as a scheduled caste community. Or in general terms, we call them as a Dalit. But I will prefer to call them as a scheduled caste community. I didn't like the word Dalit. So, as uh, in the morning, uh, in the, uh, not in the morning, in the afternoon while talk, Subhuti says that what Baba Sahib means to me. So what is his importance in my life? So I will give some sort of very glimpse not details. So I have not seen him. That is first thing. I was very child in a eight years old when he died. I have memory the day he died that night, myself and my father, we were on the Nagpur railway station going to our hometown in Bhandara district. And there were the rumors just as uh, I rem uh, remember that vividly, that scene. All just like shook up everything in the uh, railway station. And there were rumors that the trains are free for traveling to uh, um, participate in the funeral of Dr. Ambedkar. That was only remaining. That was my memory. And my father and me, instead of not going to uh, funeral, but we were going to our own place, our own hometown. Next day morning, when we were seeing from the train, so there is a very uh, big river in Bhandara district that is called Vainganga River. And on that river, I saw thousands and thousands of people just the shaving their head and still any, any way, uh, in a way, they were participating in the funeral. That was the tradition of a Hindu tradition if someone died as a father or family member, they shave their head, go to the river, and um, offer the, these whole hairs to the river, and they wash their, and just uh, remember their father and their gratitude like that. So I was remembering that much only. So that was my memory about Dr. Ambedkar's death day in Nagpur railway station. 
but whatever he has done whatever he has created a wealth so we are the benefit beneficiaries of his struggle and of his wealth what he has created i will say something about that so talking about that my childhood up to school days i may say 15 16 years old from childhood to there so whatever i memory and still i remember and I, because i it is my own experience i experienced the untouchability i was not allowed to come into the on the courtyard of a people and uh, if i was thirsty so they were giving the water pouring the water on my hands like this and from the top he will hold the some um, jug there and he will pour the water i will be drink like that so that sort of situation untouchability was there no question of going anybody's inner house or like that so i experienced that sort of uh, untouchability even in school days uh, people used to treat us badly they were not allowing us to uh, uh, touch their food etc that was still was very prevalent in the uh, school days uh, so and those days we were not allowed to go any well our community wells were totally different our community living were totally outside the village in one corner so we were as is as good as completely boycott from rest of the community from rest of the village so everything is isolated our job my father used to go to village with other members of the community to carry the dead animals to outside and that flesh of the dead animal was our survival food nothing else because we were not allowed to work in their fields we were not allowed to touch we were not allowed to do any sort of work so our survival not me only but whole community were survival on the flesh of the dead animal that was the situation at the time we used to get some cooked food when if somebody from the village used to tell my father pass on this message to such and such village which why which might be 8 or 10 kilo um, uh, miles away then my father used to go to pass on that message when he will come back then that person will give the cooked remaining food as a wages it was not a wages at all so that was the situation we lived i lived in my childhood so it is not just me it is the whole say millions and millions people of indian um, society so in a way this was the situation very glimpse you might have understood but our experience totally different i am telling you and you are imagining Im doing some imagination on my uh, exp uh, explanation but the experience is very horrified in that so sort of way we were not having proper clothes we were not having proper food and there were no any channels available to us to live as a human we can say that the uh, in west it is said that the slavery is the curse or the slavery is the very bad thing but in indian situation this caste system and this untouchability and this sort of behavior is worse than the slavery because in slavery at least you can touch you can 
um, say something, you can keep distance, you can give wages to him, but in this, there is no such things. So I hope you will get some glimpse what sort of society and what sort of our livelihood in our childhood. I will quote one exam example from the Baba Sahib's uh, struggle. He did a struggle, many, many things, but one struggle that he wanted to show, or I will say, he showed to the whole world how these people in India are being treated worse than animal. The struggle was, it is well known as a Mahad Satyagraha. Mahad, in that municipal um, town, there was a public big pond. And it was, since it was a public, Dr. Ambedkar took a chance to touch that water and to drink that water. So along with his follower, he went to that tank, they touch the water, they drink the water, but seeing that all caste Hindus people thought that the water has been completely polluted. It became impure. So what they did, they purified the water by mixture of cow dung, cow urine, cow milk, curd and ghee. It is known as panchagavya in uh, Indian language. So five things from the cow. So with the mixture, with earthen pot, they pour into the water and they declare that now water is purified. So you can understand that the human touch is polluting, but cow dung is purifying. And that was Dr. Ambedkar's struggle to show the world that these human beings, these men are being treated worse than the animal. They are not even equal to the animals. So this was the situation of the whole uh, lot, nearly uh, one-fifth of the Indian population. So, so I am one of, the, one of them. And uh, all experiencing this, Dr. Baba Sahib, once very with great frustrations and with anguish, said in a public lecture to all this scheduled caste community. Uh, it was in completely Marathi. I tried to put forth in English. Why you have not died in the womb of your mother? Instead of taking birth to live this animal life. It means he was so desperate seeing these people. This, these, are, these are not men, women. They are just worse than the element. And he was saying, why you, why you are living? Why you have not died in the womb of your mother? What is the use of living such a life? And because all channels just to live as a human were completely denied, were completely prohibited, and this prohibition and denial, very interestingly, has a religious sanctions. And therefore, Dr. Ambedkar Baba Sahab was very, very against the Hinduism. He says, it's not a religion. It's not a religion at all. It is something bad. 
and it needs to be discarded at once. So, after narrating this, all evils of the Hinduism, at the same time, he was advocating to community people, take education. Send your children to the schools. Try to educate yourself. Take the situation, uh, benefit of the situation. That time there was a British Raj or whatever it is. So some uh, facilities were there. At least they can take the education by sitting at least at the corner of the classrooms. So at least they can. So he was, his message to his community, take education. And I am a product of that because his advice was completely followed by his followers, community people, and they were sending their children to the schools. He single-handedly fought with Gandhi and his Congress leader to give educational facilities to SC communities and to give the reservations in the government job. And I am a product of that. I got the education because of the scholarships and reservations. I got the government job because of the reservations. And it is complete gift of Baba Sahib. We can't, we won't, don't won't value Gandhi or we won't value any Congress leader because they have done nothing to, for us except Baba Sahib. He fought each and every corner with them to have these rights to us. <clears throat> so under his reservations policies for education, for welfare, for uh, uh, government jobs, the whole lot of the community, not completely 100%, but one thing, he opens the channel. He opens the opportunities. Who, whosoever has taken that chance, they come up. And it is not just liberation. It is not just coming out of that fold, just my own generation. But I think generation after generation. If I, my father would not have sent to me to the... Uh, schools, I would not have be, become educated. If I would not have educated, my children would not have been educated. So it is not just for one community or it is not just for the one generation, it is generations to follow. So therefore, his struggle or we can say the other power is still existing in the Indian society. So he did everything so that the scheduled caste community can live dignified and honorable human life. But he didn't stop here only. He has not given because he, whatever he has given us all these uh, facilities, but he was very clear from his writings and from his thinking that this is not sufficient. The life is not just materialistic. Life is has some more meaning. And therefore, he laid the conversion ceremony. He did so much for this scheduled caste community because whatever he was saying after his struggle, the scheduled caste community people will follow him complete blindly. Whatever you say, they will follow. Whatever you say, they will just accept it because he did, he did so much for them. And he is father real, father than real father. Because real father would have made us to slave for any upper caste people. But he is the father who lift us far beyond us. So therefore, we call him Baba Sahib very respectfully. And we have very great 
tremendous emotions what he had done for us and for our community. So he led the then conversion ceremony and whole lot in Maharashtra community, Maharashtra scheduled caste community, en bloc started saying we are Buddhist. Just on 14th October 1956, only four around 5 lakhs people, 5 million people, uh, five lakh, uh, uh, half, a million. half a million, half a million people uh, converted to Buddhism, but that message went throughout Maharashtra and each and every corner of Maharashtra state, wherever there is a scheduled caste community, they will call themselves as a Buddhist, whether they formally converted to Buddhist, or not to Buddhist, that doesn't matter. And since then, in everybody's house, likewise in my house also, there will be a Dr. Ambedkar photo and Buddha photo together. We were not knowing what is what, but we were saying we are Buddhist, we are not Hindus. And we are saying Buddhist with very proud. We are proud to be a Buddhist. So, but in his, that address when he gave on 15th October, he said, I am giving this religion to you so that you can become, it's a Marathi word, I, I, I don't have any single uh, English translation word. He said in Marathi, you should become Sanmananiya, Anukarniya and Vandaniya. It means you should be, you should become respectable. That is Sanmaniya. Anukarniya means people should follow you. They, just, they, they should not just respect you, but they should follow you. You should be like that. And Vandaniya, they should bow down before you. So you should be such a person, you should become such a person by practicing Buddhist seriously that these three words will apply to you. So this was the reason, not just making the worst or animal level people to a man level, but making to the best human. So it was his whole range of treating that people, those who are living on the animal level, he wanted to bring them to that level and we came. I realized this sentence for my life, for me. When I was just a Buddhist, I came in contact with the Padmavadra, as he said in uh, 86. I was just for the namesake of Buddhist. And being a Buddhist, I was reading, but not following not understanding, because there was something um, we were t told that Buddhist means serving the monk. Monk has to practice. Your duty is to serve the monk, look after them, that's all. Then that means you are a good Buddhist. So this was the teaching we were given, and we were following this. But since being a Buddhist, I was reading much, and therefore, what uh, I was troubling <laughs> Padmavadra uh, over the, I think, over the year in Mumbai, when I was there. So, so I am Buddhist because of Dr. Ambedkar. Not only me, but like me, there are many. There are lakhs and lakhs of people. But they don't know how to practice. And how to practice comes from Bhante. So I greatly rejoice in Bhante and his gift of the order. Because his gift of the order, therefore Lokamitra, Padmavajra, they were in India. They taught us how to live Buddhist life, how to practice meditation, 
how to relate with each other, how to get rid of the hatred. So all sorts of, uh, because I was extremely hatred persons towards uh, who, one who transferred me because I didn't uh, bow before him for uh, supporting for the bribe, taking bribe. So, so all sorts of uh, uh, thing and therefore today I feel at that time also I was feeling just to be a Buddhist, very proud, but today I really feel being a proud in real sense. That was some sort of a pretending way. Yes, I am not Hindu, I am Buddhist. But now I am something uh, really uh, different. Uh. So as I said, Baba Sahib didn't made me or my generation, but my next generation also. Just like I said, my children, they are Buddhist, they are officer, they are engineer. It is because Baba Sahib struggle. He liberated the whole community and that will happen generation to generation, that I mean. So, so I will conclude uh, in rejoicing merit with uh, Bhante and his great gift of the order of Triyatna order to the world. <coughs> so, as I said, I was just Buddhist for the namesake. And when uh, came in contact with Padmasra, so his friendship really enriched my Buddhist life, or in a way, my whatever, whatever the life I am. So his friendship has enriched me. And at that time, he was in a uh, robe. He was bhikkhu. And the way he was behaving as a bhikkhu, it was really surprising me, because I was all the time in contact with the bhikkhu in Diksha Bhumi at Nagpur, because I was from the Nagpur. And the way the bhikkhu were behaving arrogantly, and in a very different manner. So I had a totally different experience from the Padmavasra, <laughs> very friendly. Uh, so whenever I used to visit uh, any monastery, Bhikkhu will never offer a uh, glass of water. But when I entered in Bandra Center, Padmavasra offered me a glass of water. So I was shocked. <laughs> how, how Bhikkhu can offer a water to me? So in a way, his friendship, uh, enrich my life very much. And uh, I rejoice in merits of uh, Lokmitra also, who founded Triratna Centers in India. And uh, I further rejoice in uh, Subhuti, who refined my spiritual life. So, because of the order, because of Bhante, I am in front of you. Because of Baba Sahib, I am Buddhist, but because of Bhante, I am become more real Buddhist, refined Buddhist in a way, with the help of the order members, which Bhante has given a gift to us. So this is my life, and this is the significance of Dr. Ambedkar. So thank you for listening to me. Thank you.